please make sure to credit and just pay tribute to that person that you're looking up to. Creativity at its core is about problem solving. And by living as a creative copycat, you're abusing your own gift. Be a different breed and make your own damn waves. What's going on? You're listening to episode 104 of the Perspective Podcast, and I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective. This show is fuel for your mind and creative grind. And each week, my guests and I provide the tools for thinking bigger, overcoming adversity, and making an impact with your work. At the end of each episode, I share a listener of the week, so stick around to figure out how you can get a shout out on a future episode in the show notes and the newsletter. Today is going to be a bit of a shorter one, trying to pack some stuff in before the holidays hit. And this one's all about being a copycat and copying other people's work. I'm not calling out anyone specific, so don't come here looking for some drama. It's not going to happen. Essentially, I'm dishing out some advice to my past self who needed to hear this in hopes that Maybe if you're uh, guilty of some of these things that you can apply it to your craft and your process and approach, or maybe you can just be a good creative neighbor and pass it on to someone who you think it could help. And I want to start this one off with a quote. Imitation is about copying. Emulation is when imitation goes one step further, breaking through into your own thing. And that one's from Austin Kleon from his book, Steal Like an Artist. I highly recommend getting into that book. That that book is incredible and it just vibes well to this episode today. So for me, backstory, I've been drawing well before the first Power Rangers came out way back in like 1993. I Googled that. So trust me, that's when it came out. And during that time, I was five years old when it released. I was born in 88, 80s baby. And with the Power Rangers, I was obsessed with Jason, the Red Ranger. I always wanted to be him until Tommy the Green Ranger came along and he had that cool flute and a cool dragon. It was so badass. But as I grew up, you know, I was having into drawing. I I drew clearly since Power Rangers. But as I grew up, I mimicked everything I saw and I would redraw it. And yes, I would even trace things at time like Pokemon cards. Guilty as charged. But when you're a kid, you know, it's, it's okay to copy. Copying is second nature. It's harmless and innocent and it's just a way for a kid to express themselves and at the same time develop some artistic skills and find out what type of medium they like you know it's good to observe but as you get older copying is no longer innocent especially when you pass someone else's work off as your own you get in trouble when you copy someone else's test in school and especially in college you're in deep shit if you plagiarize someone else's paper as your own But in this creative world that we all live in, I'm assuming you live in it if you listen into this episode or the podcast in general, but if you're a creative copycat and you present someone's work as your own, especially something like Instagram, you better prepare yourself because you could have an angry mob show up in your inbox, especially if the people that you rip off have a large audience. I've seen it happen before. So I'm a very observant person. I'm that weirdo who stakes out the perfect spot at a restaurant to people watch My wife knows exactly which spot I want to sit in whenever we go. It's pretty funny, but you know, lately I'm observing a lot of things on social media that leave a gross taste in my mouth and it's because it reminds me of the old me. And at one time I was the creative copycat who rode and stole waves and I now know there's a better way. That's why today we're going to talk about riding waves, stealing waves and making waves of your own. And if I can help at least one person avoid dying as a copycat and help them become special breeds of their own, then I did my job today. You can find the show notes of this episode at perspective-collective.com slash 104. And let's keep the ball rolling. I would love to see you continue to take a screenshot or share a video of whatever episode you're listening to. Tag me at Perspective Podcast on Instagram so we can connect via stories and let me know what your biggest takeaway of this episode was. Let's get into the show. So before we can dive into riding waves, stealing waves, and making waves of your own, I think it's really important to 
touch on the topic of when is it okay to copy? So when is it? When is copying okay to you? To me, I feel if you're early in your creative grind, you're going to be tempted to copy. And honestly, it doesn't bug me. And I'm all for copying in one condition. You give credit where credit is due. When I first got into social media, let's see, I got into Facebook at like 2006, right when I went to college, Warper College, what's up? But when I got into college, Facebook was just coming around and you needed a college email in order to get access. And that's where I really started sharing my drawings. But then Instagram came along and I didn't know what I was doing. That's when like I first got into lettering too. I was just doing abstract trippy art. And then I discovered lettering. I'm like, oh my God, this is insane. I didn't pay attention to typography class as much in college. They bored me, especially the movie Helvetica, but now I love it. And you know, I didn't know how to do compositions. I didn't know how to do layout. And so I was ripping people's compositions and plugging in my own words without knowing how to correctly handle this situation. And for me, you know, Instagram was this massive place of people all over the world sharing similar art like this. And it's 10 times that size now. But I thought there was no way that this person from Indonesia is going to see me ripping his composition and plugging in my own words into his layout. And boy, was I wrong. I learned the hard way that it's pretty much a dick move to not credit the original artist. In places like Instagram, Dribbble, and Behance, there's tight niche communities on these platforms. I'm in part of it. I, if I see someone ripping someone else's work off, I slide in someone's DMs and I let them know or I'll politely tell the other person like, yo, you need a credit. We look out for one another. And we're we're quick to call out people who are plagiarizing other people's work. So it's not flattering. I repeat, it's not flattering when people rip off your work and pass it off as their own. And when they get called out for it or other people are like, dude, it's not a big deal. You should be flattered by it that they're inspired. I'm like, no, no, actually, it's not flattering at all. It is flattering, though, when people imitate your work and give you proper credit in the caption and even go out of their way to tag you. You know, to me, that's pretty cool. And when people do this, I go out of my way to go leave them some love and, you know, drop a nice little comment. Hey, this is dope. I am flattered. However, Find that next way that you can add your own spin and outdo what I did, okay? Make it your own. And then I'll connect with them. And I'll also find out when I do give credit in the past when I've like, not when I've copied someone's work or imitated and I gave credit, that person was like way nice to me and it kind of struck a little relationship and it kind of lit a fire under my ass to, you know, really elevate my game. So now that we have that taken care of and when it's okay to copy, but let's talk about writing waves. So what do I mean by writing waves? To me, writing waves means writing someone else's success and copying it within your own work. And I understand the reasoning behind it, but when so many people ride the same waves, the overall sea, the ocean, it becomes so saturated with the same look and feel. And it just gets downright boring, dull, and unoriginal. It makes platforms like Dribbble and Instagram not very fun to traffic anymore, especially things like Pinterest. Here's an example I've, I've been observing a lot lately. So I've been seeing a lot of the same flat lay mock-ups with digital artwork and pose in the center being used over and over and over again. So I get people doing side hustles. They're making mock-ups for people to buy. But if you're a big name and you put out a mock-up there for people to buy, you're going to see a lot of people just watering down the community with the same image and all the feeds are looking the same. And what I'm finding is I'm having a super hard time picking whose artist this is or the style out of the sea of saturation. And for me, if I start seeing the same look over and over again, I'm scrolling right past it or I'm closing the app and I'm going elsewhere. And just a side note, authenticity is a huge thing too. So if you're one of these people doing these mock-ups and you're posting your digital work, If you're not being forthcoming about it and trying to pass it off as this digital work was actually analog and done by hand, I think that's pretty not cool, but it's extra not cool and just leaves another weird taste in my mouth is when you have digital artwork mocked up in a piece with all these different tools of pencils and pens and rulers and compasses, but none of this was clearly used within the piece. To me, that's just very unauthentic and it's something I wouldn't recommend doing. All right, people can see through it. It's just weird. You got a black layout with chalk laid out everywhere like you did a chalk piece, but you know, then you got this super colorful, vibrant piece centered in the middle 
it's just it doesn't vibe well it's weird so watch out please avoid that i think most people can agree with me on that but i I get it we live in a digital era you know and i'm not trying to be that old dude who's scared of change because you know I, i was one who was romantic about analog work but i got on the ipad last year and it totally changed my life I'm not going to knock people using mock-ups because when it's used tastefully, I think it's incredible. And from time to time, I'll even implement one, especially when I'm pitching a client of how this mural is going to look on a wall here. You know, that's perfect. Or someone like Stephen Coons or um, Ian Barnard, they crush it. Or Adam Vickerell, all three have been on the podcast and they do an amazing job of using mock-ups, taking their own photo stage shots, flat lays, and then implementing their work on it. They're forthcoming about it. They use digital hashtags. They're not trying to trick anyone and it looks dope. They do a great job with it. However, when thousands of people have the same composition and style, I find it very discouraging because it feels like people are cutting corners. You're riding a wave that someone else did that worked for them and then you're trying to replicate it and doing the same thing. And it's like, you're getting lost in the mix. You're not rising above the noise. So my encouragement to you is when you see a flock of people swerving right to bite a trend, be different and go left. All right, let's pivot to stealing waves. This one should be self-explanatory, but since I still see it's a huge issue, it needs to be addressed. Overall, don't copy someone's work and pass it off as your own. Like, that's straight up bullshit. Who would think that's a good idea? AKA, I kind of did some of this back in the day. So, you know, I'm kind of throwing myself under the bus here. I'm not perfect. But what's worse, though, is when someone passes someone else's work off as their own and they try to profit off it. Like, that's just straight up plagiarism and you deserve whatever kind of bad karma comes your way. And there's plenty of issues with this. I've dealt with this. I've been... On Instagram, people stealing my work, trying to print it off and put it on t-shirts or whatever, you know, some random thing overseas and, you know, people profiting off their work, you know, and that's, that's a bad road to go down and doing this. So you can get yourself into some serious legal issues, especially because you're infringing on a potential copyright or a trademark on someone's work. So, you know, if you see this or you have friends doing this, please persuade them not to. I, I see a lot of it on Pinterest. I see a lot of my friends' works getting ripped off and being printed on people's t-shirts and gear and tote bags it's horrible but it's happened so you know that's why it needs to be talked about you know people like me and you and people I've had on this show and people you look up to we've worked so hard we've busted our asses to build an audience to develop our own style to develop our voice and our message so don't steal people's thunder and pass it off as your own as you didn't invest the time to earn it And it feels so good when you do earn it and you do catch recognition and you do get client sales, you do get product sales off a style you earned on your own. Maybe you emulated someone else's, but you put your own flavor on it. And we're going to talk about that next. So again, if you're going to copy and rip someone's work off and share it, please do yourself a favor and everyone else a favor and give proper credit. Your crediting is everything and you're really saving yourself a lot of trouble because i've seen some angry people people have sent their instagram armies to go attack someone and they just blow them up and next thing you know they're getting reported they're getting their accounts deactivated or they're deleting all their work and they hide in a shell and just block everybody and disappear don't be that person i've seen it happen too many times all right let's move on to a little bit more peppier section making your own waves Many creatives think the best way to stand out is by fitting in and riding these waves. And I have a hard time wrapping my mind around this. So let's break down the second part of that Austin Kleon quote that I started off in the intro. Emulation is when imitation goes one step further, breaking through into your own thing. And to me, guess what I'm going to relate this to? Did you guess? It's pizza, okay? I relate this one to pizza, of course. So anyone can make a pepperoni pizza. I could copy the exact same recipe that my neighbor Joe across the street um, has. You know, he's been making this same pizza for years. I could rip that. I could make that pizza and be like, damn, this shit is dope. And, you know, I'll be happy with a pizza I took from someone else's recipe. But better yet, 
I could go one step further and add my own unique signature twist. I could go and seek out the finest pepperonis in all the world, and I could combine it with my own harvested garden ingredients, and then finally, I could grill it. Yeah, I did make a pepperoni pizza, but I did it my way. And that's why I want to encourage you to do. Do it your way. If you see a style of calligraphy that you really like, you know, maybe it's black letter with a parallel pen. Do it yourself, but then do it your way. Add some shading or detail with the pencil. Add an illustration on the side of it. Take it that next step and put your own unique thumbprint on it. And for me, I find inspiration all the time scrolling or swiping through Instagram, Dribble, Pinterest, or design around me in catalogs or on signage or on old rusty murals painted around cities you know that stuff just inspires me and i pluck what piques my curiosity then inject my own flavor of message and detail into it from there so yes someone else started the wave of hand lettering or doing detailed illustrations or even drawing digitally through procreate you know someone else started that wave but for me i'm riding that wave a little bit i'm using the momentum from that wave and i'm making my own waves from it so let's wrap this up When I make my own waves with my work or the podcast, my whole goal is to just blaze my own trail. Most definitely, I admit, I'm fueled by inspiration I see from others, especially out there in the wild, but I'm constantly focused on how I can take that inspiration, emulate it, and make it my own. Okay, Again, putting Scotty Russell's DNA all over it. So if you're riding someone else's wave, I want to challenge you today to think differently and how can you make it your own? How can you take that wave, spin off it, and make your own way from it? And if you're stealing someone else's wave, please make sure to credit and just pay tribute to that person that you're looking up to. Being a creative, you and me, we're creatives. And this is a gift. And I love having this gift. But creativity at its core is about problem solving. And by living as a creative copycat, you're abusing your own gift. Be a different breed and make your own damn waves. Whew, that was a little fiery one, and this has been on my mind for a while now, and I've been dying to just make an episode about it, especially just, I'll use any reason to just go and draw something with a cat, so don't die a copycat. Try to get clever with it, but again, this isn't trying to attack anyone specifically, and I pay attention to things going on around me. I'm always trying to consume and tweak and tailor and improve my game and seeing what the current trends are. You know, if it's something that I could ride the wave and make it my own or not. And generally, I'm trying to break off and do my own thing. But I see a lot of people who get caught up in the shuffle of thinking that they need to fit in when really you want to stand out. You you want to make a name for yourself. You want to attract freelance. You want to, you know be the person who's getting featured, but those people who are attracting those kind of works or attracting those features are doing something different. You know, when you're scrolling in the feed, you stop because their work is different. You know, I want to encourage you to be different because I'm trying to be different. So again, not attacking anyone. This is the advice I wish someone would have given me when I started off on my early days of grinding, finding my own voice and my own path. And I learned the hard way. And I've seen other people learn the hard way and it's taught me a lot of lessons and I hope I can pass that along to you so you can package it up in a pretty bow and share it off to someone else who could use it as well. All right, I hope you dig it. Let me know again what you think, what your biggest takeaway was from this one. Uh, Take a screenshot, share it with me at Perspective Podcast on Instagram and let's segue into the listener of the week. And if you want to get a shout out on the podcast show notes or newsletter as the listener of the week, all you got to do is subscribe and leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. And yes, I can see international reviews too, so go and leave them. The listener of the week goes to Ryan BR, and he titles this one, Creative Inspiration at its Best. Ryan states, I have become an avid listener to the podcast over the last year. I gotta say that Scotty always finds the words to inspire me and has helped me push through my daily struggles as a creator. Heck yeah, Ryan. Scotty's advice and tips on overcoming the hardships that we place on ourselves has helped me see the positive side of grinding it out and trusting the process. I can promise you that you won't be disappointed or leave feeling uninspired after just one episode. I sincerely appreciate it, man. I have enjoyed engaging with you on the side, getting you over into the Facebook group, theperspective-collective.com. Jump in this community so you can meet people like Ryan. And I appreciate you creating not one, but two pieces for the Perspective Podcast 100 prompt. 
Appreciate you, homie. Much love. And as I wrap things up, I got to give a huge thanks to Anya Brennan, all the way from Ireland, for making this sound so good. And for my executive assistant, Paige Garland, I could not do this without you two. Thank you so much, ladies. And a huge thanks goes out to Nick Jenkins of Bluka for all the dope theme music you hear on this show. Listen and support him through SoundCloud, Spotify, and Instagram at Bluka. That's B L O O K A H. And as you finish off this week strong, and as you go into December, I want to encourage you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this.